The following is a presentation of iRacing on PTR TV. We'd like to thank all of our channel partners for their support. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. After a week off here in the eCar Premier Late Model Series, we come back here to a relatively new course here on the iRacing service. Kevin Harvick's Kern County Raceway Park is about a half mile track in Bakersville, California. It replaced the now defunct and non-existent Mesa Marin Raceway, about a half mile track, a little bit of a D shape and some high banked corners. Let's see what these guys can do and uh, hopefully we have a good race on our hands here tonight. Going to be myself, Corey Silva, in the booth and in the production truck. And I do have Bradley Dalton here in the booth giving me the calls and uh, helping me out with tonight's action. So, uh, obviously, we uh, we took a week off there, Bradley, because, you know, things some, do, some I's needed to be dotted and some T's needed to be crossed. And uh, hopefully that can be, uh, we could say that affirmatively that it was done here tonight. Yeah, good evening, everyone. It is, it's been a week off it's given some time there's been some things behind the scenes and uh i'm curious to see how kern county turns out uh looking like a smaller grid this evening which is not always a bad thing uh kern county is it's a track that i don't know that a lot of drivers just naturally own but the drivers in this series you know if you're running the series and you're serious about it it's probably one that needs to be on your radar and you need to be aware exists and probably own it um Kevin Harvick's Kern Raceway. I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a good show, but only one way to find out. Yeah, we get the half mile layout here with these super high banked corners here. Again, uh, if you go back to about 2001, you can look up some Craftsman Truck Series races and they, they raced here for uh, a good portion of time. Well, that was until the Craftsman Truck Series turned into Cup Light with the schedule. Podcast topic for you there, but uh, should be some good racing. I think we'll see some side by side. I've heard that uh, the second lane is kind of more of the ideal lane. That inside lane right against the white line a little bit harder to maintain. But uh, right now we are in warm up right now. We do have a long one on our hands today, 120 laps. So uh, hopefully it will uh, go by expeditiously here. We won't have any wrecks or uh, a significant amount of wrecks. Justin Crow leading the warm up here. Chris Horton, second Rue, Riley Music, and Travis Suckup being our top five. We got 14 cars here on a cloudy day here in Bakersfield. Take a look at our weather 74 in the air, 79 in the track. We are. 6 p.m. sim time out of a summer date, so lights won't be in our uh, existence here today. And look at that, Bradley, 34% humidity. It's not foggy. I can't tell you how thankful I am for that. I feel like every broadcast I've done in iRacing over the past however many weeks since, uh, since the rain went from soon trademark to officially released, I don't even know how many weeks it's been, but every race I've done lately has been just 99.9% .9 humidity, and I'm just... I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it, Grandpa. And you, and I mean, obviously I cover predominantly oval, but you cover predominantly road, so that uh, that is occurring even on the other side as well? Yes, it is a big problem, and it is absolutely driving me insane. It, even on certain road courses, I've been seeing 99% humidity, not rain, just super humid for whatever reason. So I'm glad to see that the iRacing gods have blessed us with some decent weather. All right, you're going insane, insane in the membrane. All right, you left me hanging on that one, but uh, I respect that one. I respect right. that one. I won't. Either way, I guess it preserves us from copyright. But these guys are getting ready for that starting lineup, so let's go down and meet them there. We got 14 drivers here on the evening, and let's go ahead and meet them. 
Our poll sitter here today, Justin Crow, with a 17.557. We got Riley Music to that outside. Uh, only about two one hundredths off that poll pace. Chris Horton, he's in North Carolina. I don't, I don't know if unknown as a town or he's just being private there, but he's in third. Daniel Folt is in fourth. Blake Massingle in fifth. Nathan Rue in sixth. And then we got Cameron Bennett in seventh with Travis Suckup in eighth there, Bradley. Yeah, and then you got Steven Rex in P9. You got Mark Royer, the mad scientist, in P10. You're going from there in P11. Jonathan Golden and Jeff Williams in 12th place. And then from there, you're going to be looking at P13, Kyle Tershak, and Steven Heights in P14. And that'll be our weather condition. Oh, that'll be our weather. That'll be our grid. We've already gone over our weather conditions here. Um, in terms of our race details, not much to really go over. There is, to my knowledge, no sets of tires in the pits for them to change. And 120 laps, I'm going to say they should be able to do that on fuel, but I feel like we've had that come up once or twice where it wasn't enough. So not going to lie, don't quite know. Maybe someone in chat will give me that information, but 120 laps is a, a pretty long race. This track does have a lot of on-throttle time, some high speeds. So that may be a factor here as Chris Horton moving to the inside. We don't, because we didn't cover last week, I don't know the odds and ends of this race here today. Uh, presumably a penalty from last week, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I want to say it's a penalty, but again, I'm not for sure either. Um, I didn't see anything announced about a penalty, but that doesn't mean that there isn't one. So I'll have to see what we can find out because he's running that. Bottom line, he may just want to stay off the banking yeah. here on the pace lap. It's very 50-50 on which way he's looking. Yeah, I'm not sure there, but you can see on the bottom left of the screen, we did get some branding here within the series in the past weeks. So we want to thank uh, RKM, Ryan Kuhn Motorsport Setup Shops. RKM Setup Shops there uh, helping out the league, so you can check them out if you're looking for some high-quality setups. We're coming off of turn number four here. Justin Crow in the 86. Riley Music in that black and blue number 47 here. Green flag in the air. Let's go race racing here today at Kern County. Yeah, 120 laps should move fairly quick, so stay on board here, because looking up the inside there is Justin Crow with Riley Music on the outside. We'll see who can land where. You got Chris Horton and P3 trying to sneak through. Inside is still Justin Crow. Outside still Riley Music. The middle line seems to be the better line, though, and Justin Crow gets a little bit loose there, a little out of shape on that inside line. Can't make it work. He's now down in the P2. Make that P3 here is after the first lap. It is Riley Music in the lead. Yeah, as I was, t as I uh, said, I did. I bought this track immediately when it came out. I think I ran maybe one lap here, um, but I just, from what I've been told, that second lane is kind of where you want to be. There might be a little bit more banking here. Uh, did get a, an update of the number 54, which I don't see a 54 here today. Um, has a different driver. Uh, I don't know if you see a 54 on the overlays, but I don't. But either way, uh, battle for the lead. Here comes Horton looking to the inside of Riley. Let's see if he can keep that car wound up, albeit on the inside lane. Dive into the inside. Music's going to pinch him down, pinch him down. And uh, Horton, I think, is going to back off respectfully. Yeah, Horton playing the smart game here and just backing off a little bit. Giving Music a moment to kind of breathe and relax. It's a long race, 120 laps. I feel like we talk about this all the time. There's no sense in wrecking your car on lap five and being out when, you know, you've got 115 laps to go. You can continue to put pressure and try to catch him when he's weak here. And there we see Chris Horton's trying to look that middle line. Middle line seems to be the faster line. And I say that, but Riley Music seems really strong there on the bottom. We come around five laps in of 120. It's still Riley Music in the lead with Chris Horton there in P2. Further back, you got action there. Is that is going to be the 08. That is going to be Cameron Bennett. This is back in the back of the field he's moving through that is jonathan golden on the bottom there's the 36 mark royer gets a little low there and washes up but no harm no foul things back in the back go back to single file yep single file indeed we got the train here it seems as though the train is kind of starting there uh with justin crow now this could be a plotted attempt to save tires um or maybe he just he had the hot lap pace but doesn't have the race pace not quite sure uh where that is, and I guess to Kyle Tursak there. Um, he is running for Jacob Witt here today in that number uh, 150, but number 54 machine. Um, not quite sure. My wife just gave me a burrito. Not quite sure what that's all about, but uh, for that race lead, Chris Horton going to the outside. Looks like he's going to do a little bit of a crossover move. I thought he was, but no, he's going to retain that outside spot, and the caution will interrupt. It's going to be Blake Massingo. 
Blake Mass and go down in P14 here. Let's see this instant replay. It's probably going to be a case of breaks loose on his own. And here we go. We're coming down the main straight. He's going to send it into one there. Ah, he got helped by the 45, actually. And there he goes. He comes up, takes the four, and someone else there, that orange car, and then gets back going. So a little bit of damage on the front fender, but nothing too bad that I can see. Yeah, we'll take one more perspective uh, from the front bumper of the 45 here. Yeah. Brave move. And Couldn't make it stick. I'll bring up my Taylor Swift line as I have been doing lately. There was not a blank space baby, but he wrote his name. And uh, unfortunately, wrote it on the left rear quarter panel of Massengill, who, um, you know, the front of that bumper is a little bit concaved, but uh, that's nothing that couldn't get repaired. I'm actually shocked he didn't try to repair it in the pits there. Yeah, especially considering he's back in the back, there's no reason he shouldn't have just went ahead and pulled in and taken the quick repair there and gone on. Um, I don't know if they get a fast repair in this league. I can't remember off the top of my head, but even then, that's probably only about five, 10 seconds of damage and under caution, I think you'd be okay to pull in, let the guys beat out that fender a little bit and then get back going. Well, exactly that. We did have uh, Steven Heights in the 51. I know he was kind of in the realm of that wreck. I don't think it actually, um affected him in any way but he came into the pitch could be again maybe for fuel not quite sure but i am liking what i'm seeing here with this layout with this circuit there bradley it seems like there's different opportunities different approaches to the corners it's not just a standard everyone runs the same line you see some guys going right to the white line you see some guys running in the second lane for the whole corner and then you also have some guys doing a kind of a high low move to get the run on exit so it seems the driver is really in control uh, of what's going on here tonight. Yeah, this first impressions of this track when I was, you know, kind of getting ready for the broadcast, I watched a couple of quick YouTube videos and it really does seem like a track that a driver can show their style and be successful on one to green here. So we'll see if that continues to reign true as the drivers come in double file. Riley Music, I'm gonna pick that inside line there, Chris Horton to the outside and then behind him, it's Nathan Rue and Justin Crow. Justin Crow, you mentioned it had hot lap pace in the warm up and in practice, but hasn't seemed to capitalize here in the race. We'll see. What he can do here, we're coming down the back stretch, and Riley Music will have control of the field here coming out of four. It'll be up to him when the field decides to take off running. Will be up to him indeed here, and uh, he'll see if he can clear. Nathan Rue in that three, still looking for his first win, uh, but he's in good spot now on the loud pedal. His music there, but Horton did a really good job. He remains side by side for the majority of the front straightaway, and he'll keep that second lane. He'll see if he can get the run down the back straightaway. And if he could take anything with it there, but there goes Crow in third. He is battling to the outside, trying to make a move on Rue, but that will not come to fruition here. But it will open the door for Daniel Folds in the 09, who's going to have a look. He's going to have a peek. He's going to have a whiff, and he may have himself a pass. And it looks like we continue moving through here. This is, again, Justin Crow. We're looking at an off-the-back bumper at Justin Crow, who's got the UT car on the inside there. That is going to be Jonathan Golden trying to work his way through worst livery he could have and that's just because i'm not a tennessee fan because uh i live in their rival state so, so we see that going through um and so now we've got the 54 here that is trying to run up the inside of blake massengill that's kyle tersak who's trying to run through and you can see blake massengill's loose there up the, on the high line i don't think he's liking the setup of this car and may just not be his preferred setup there he's trying to make it run trying to do what he can there and get it moving and still single file through up in the front, it's still Chris Horton trying to put pressure on Riley Music, and you can see there that Nathan Rue is right in the mix as well. Yeah, Rue has gotten right to the back bumper of Horton, and uh, Horton is typically, I mean, not to pun the name of this track, he, he kind of has a Kevin Harvick style uh, mentality. The races that he has won, I know he won Myrtle Beach, and he won that um, kind of in a closer card situation. He didn't dominate the race, he put himself where he needs to be when it counts and I, I don't see him being the kind of guy he's going to force the issue he's not usually the guy who dominates the race but he's always there when it counts so if nathan rue puts a little bit too much pressure on him then i do uh, expect him to kind of roll over play dead but i think he'll come back later in the event but someone who's just not having fun right now is justin crow there goes blake massingle make, making like two trailer park girls going around the outside there and he'll get that uh seventh spot moving crow back to eighth yeah, throwing Crow back in P8, and Crow is continuing to try to push and move forward, and 
He's pushing forward and he's just falling down. He keeps falling, he keeps falling, he keeps falling, and can't find his oh. way back up. Oh, there's some taps on the wall though. So uh, the wall reaching out and tapping the side of the 68 there. Jonathan Golden, who's trying to go through, get the orange off the car, make that car look a better color. So something a couple of weeks ago that came up from admin was uh, some discussion about numbers. Um, and I will say with uh, Kyle Tursak showing is the 150, but with the 54, um, I don't believe he will actually be scored for this event just due to the number violation. Um, we'll wait and get final confirmation from admin. But based on my understanding of some of the changes that have taken place over the last couple of weeks, that is one of the things with it. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what admin's decision is on that later. But. It's a bad case there for Kyle Tursak. Yeah. I mean, you guys try to help each other out and, and, you know, try to cover for each other. But at the same time, you know, other things to deal with here. But Nathan Rue, he has something to deal with. He is going for a lead change here. Again, using that outside lane. I think that dynamic track is really coming into play here. That inside lane maybe getting a little bit overheated. That's going to give that outside a little bit more grip. But just as I say that, he goes down to the white line. So it seems as though... You want to run the white line when you're by yourself, but you want to run the outside lane when you're making a pass there. So kind of your offense and defense, you know, you have different strategies for each situation. But look at this train that we have created. We go all the way back to seventh spot with Steven Rex. Everybody uh, basically within a second and a half all over the person in front of them. And uh, there's Blake Massengo. Maybe that concave front bumper is giving him a little bit more speed here. If anything, he's uh, getting feisty uh, right to the back bumper of the 68 car. Yeah, I mean, trying to push and do as much as he can there. Blake Massengo up. Oh! He's a whole little loose there from Daniel Folds. Sliding up high. Stays oh, out of the no, wall. Come he's on, oh, come, come on. This is why we took the week off. For Christ, this is literally why we took the week off was because of crap like this. Did he come down on purpose? He did. Let's see the he replay. absolutely did. Let's he see absolutely the did. And if he didn't, I apologize. All right, there's a nudge. That's short track racing. Denny, okay, uh, Joey he's Logano. It. He's holding it and then just down. Jenny, like, okay. Joey Logano. I mean, you can say what you want, Joey Logano, whether you like him or not. I will say <laughs> that's short track racing. He gave him a little nudge, pushed him up the track. That is absolutely fine. But dude just friggin' throws his toys out the stroller here like a little whiny brat and just turns right into him. It's just, it's, it's bull. It's absolutely bull. Right. And this is why we took the week off from the series was to clean this crap up. And I'm blunt about it because this crap pisses me off. It pisses me off. And this is not me. This is not PTR TV. I don't overreact like this very often. I get frustrated, but I, I mind my P's and Q's. But I'm sorry, I've, I've had enough of this crap, Bradley. And feel free to calm me down or match my energy. Well, I mean, it's it's bull crap. That's the thing is, you know, like, here's the thing. He was slow into the corner. He gets a little bump. And it's not like he bumped him and sent him in the wall. He bumped him and he rode high. It's short track racing. Whatever you want to whatever you want to think about it, if you're someone who's experienced with short track racing, you've had the bump and run pulled on you a dozen times. That's, that's nothing new to anyone in the short track world. You've got to be prepared to catch the bump and run. And here's the thing. It's lap 30 of 120. There's plenty of racing laps left. Calm down. Pull your big girl panties up up and just keep freaking racing if you got pace and if you got a little bit of skill you could pass him again you don't have to be a little whiny brat and wreck someone that i don't get it i don't get it it doesn't make sense to me daniel folds out of here yep and either he left or he was ejected but again this is the reason we left the series for a week it was going to be permanent but i i thought you know let me give benefit of the doubt i know we got a uh, andre helping with the league and they're making changes. They certainly are. And uh, But I'm sorry. Like you said, if you join a short track series, he didn't wreck you. He literally did. And you could argue that it's too early to do that. You could absolutely argue that. It's too early to be doing bump and runs. But he did it in the perfect way. He nudged you up a lane. He passed you. He didn't wreck you. You still had a 95 laps to pass him back. But instead, you hook a right because... And now we somehow have to... Dump that attitude down the toilet and try to call the rest. Of us. You're better. You're better than it, Bradley. Take about a lap and uh, let me cool down while I think of good thoughts. 
You know, I will say we do have admin confirmation that uh, Daniel Folds in the Nine was parked. So that is that. That isn't happening again. And the direct quote is, he gone. And uh, we are gone and underway here because Nathan Rue gets going. Chris Horton there on the outside. Is Horton here a Rue for a P1? He's trying. Riley Music there on the inside, trying to put pressure through. Side by side, they keep going around. And here we go. Riding on board with Nathan Rue, who's looking behind him at Chris Horton. And we'll see where this goes. Riley Music there in P3, trying to slide up. Blake Massengill has found his way back up into fourth place. He's doing a real oh. good job there in a hole. The bump between Riley and Blake. I think Blake was trying to come down, and I think Riley wanted that middle one, but Blake's able to catch it there. Keep going there. Look at that 54 back to the back. Kyle Terzak trying to slot in there. The four, Steven Rex on the inside. Blake oh, Masco there. A little bit of a bump there. No, Blake saves it. Keeps it out of the wall. They keep running. No arm, no foul. And here we go, Blake. You need to get around him. You need to get moving real quick. Get it through. Get on the high oh. line. Get it. Ah, Blake, keep it out of the wall, though, man. Come on now. And now he slots back in. Yep. And there we go. Blake Massengill is found fourth place. Yeah, he's already damaged the car once, and uh, well, maybe adding a little bit more to it. Maybe the damage has sped him up, and he will uh, try to add. I mean, I don't know. There's are there are random times when damage actually makes you faster. If you look at the 2010 uh, uh, NASCAR World Championship race at Las Vegas, uh, a guy with a complete crab walk won the race uh, in a World Championship environment. So it does happen, although it is pretty rare to have a damaged car be faster than a regular car. But either way. Uh, Rue has the lead by about two tenths of a second over Horton. Music back to third, and it makes you wonder how much of that is speed, how much of that is patience, how much of that is, um, you know, maybe I've already over abused the tires. How much of it is short run setup versus long run setup? It's it's really hard to say, um, but we'll find out. We still have about 80 some odd laps to find those answers out, and. Again, as a little wrap-up of what's going on, Justin Crow is presumably out of the race. Folds is ejected out of the race. And then we have Jonathan Golden one lap down in the 12th spot. And you can see the issues to that number 68. So uh, he very he more as well be out of the race as well. Yeah, it's... However, if Lucky Dog comes around, I mean, he could get back on the lead lap just because you're lapped down right now. Lap 39 and 120, there's still plenty of time left on this track here. Nathan Rue in the lead. Chris Horton, P2. That's the thing to remember. It's 120 laps. We're only 40 laps in. We're at 7.48 p.m. Eastern Time. So, it... There's plenty, plenty of time left in this race for these guys to keep running and for something to happen. you just got to be patient. Yeah, no patient. sense... No, I can finish your thought. Uh, I was going to say, no sense in playing your cards too early here. You've got plenty of time. And this track, you know, it's probably not easy on tires. There might be fuel issues. Just just sit back and ride for a minute. Yeah, and I think that's finally what is going on right now. Hopefully, uh, race admin got on the radio and read the riot act and said the next, uh, just nobody else better, uh, you know, throw their toys out of the stroller there. And, Looks as though we have uh, managed to get ourselves into a little bit of a groove here. Again, music down there in third. Have a little bit of a gap back to Steven Rex. And again, the 150 slash 54 slash probably is just running for fun because I don't think he's getting points based on the preliminary information we've provided. But either way, he's in sixth for the time being. Travis Suck up in seventh. Cameron Bennett in eighth. The, Mark, the mad scientist Mark Royer in tenth. And we have Steven Heights in no, yeah, ninth, 10th, I'm just, I'm all sorts of messed up right now. And then Jeff Williams, all right, I'll give him credit. And in, in fairness there, Bradley, he has been trying to follow the rules. He's not a painter by nature, um, but he has been trying to adhere to the rules. And even though he is the 990, it is 99, but that number is big enough that we will, uh, I'll give that to him. That That is assault, that is an effort, uh, if temporary. Yeah, it's a better effort than what we saw a couple weeks ago where a guy just kind of slapped a super small number that I, yeah. I don't even remember yeah, he put a, on the broadcast. He put a SpaghettiO on the bottom of his uh, on the bottom of his regular number and tried to pass that off as working. And uh, literally the size of a SpaghettiO. Yeah. I'm not even exaggerating there. Or a Cheerio, I guess. If you don't like pasta, they won't give you some cereal there. Uh, but Pasta. Mamma mia. Yeah, my wife just randomly came in here and just gave me an egg roll. I, I, I've never had that happen before. I'm just sitting here doing my own business, and all of a sudden, there's just an egg roll in front of me. So, um, I thought you said it was a burrito. I thought it was. I just saw this rolled up item, and then I bit into it, and it was indeed an egg roll. So, um, that has made me happy, and that has made me uh, get over my little uh, my rant. Again, that, I've been broadcasting for seven plus years. I've never gone. I've gone 
about half of that before. I have never full send uh, lost my marbles there as I did. So, but I don't apologize for it. And that's also the weird thing. I genuinely don't apologize for it. So, um, but hopefully, you know, as another one bites the dust, hopefully we we add. For every one that we lose, hopefully we add someone who has the mindset that we are looking for, which is someone who is uh, competitive, respectful, fast, and, you know, has a temperament to uh, put up with the ups and downs of short track racing. Yeah, that's the thing with short track racing, and this is the thing that you have to understand. And this is for anyone, I don't care if you're brand new to short track, I don't care if you've been running it for 20 years, I don't care if you're a real-life driver, you better screw your head on and be patient. Because short track racing is unforgiving. If you've ran restrictor plate racing, Daytona, Talladega, and you've been taken out by the big one, and there wasn't crap you could do, and you're all mad about it, multiply that by about 10, and that's short track racing for you. There's going to be times where you get bumped, and you send it in the wall. There's going to be times where you're running way too fast and then you just let the car break out from under you and you total it and you ruin everybody else's race you're going to be in the lead you're going to be last place you're going to be 30 laps down take it with stride the thing is this is just a game this is <clears throat> correction this is a simulator no it's it, a game it, no it, it's a game it's a game a, a, but it's a simulator game i mean whatever yeah, you want to call a, it yeah a simulator is a is a niche category of video games yeah. at the end of the day it's a bunch of ones and zeros that we do for fun. So you got, you got to know what's going on. But I got Blake Massingill here. I'll tell you, this is the comeback kid of the race award for sure. Riley just goes all the way up in the Canada line there. He went up about three lanes high just to let him go. And it just makes me wonder, because I've never really seen Riley in the, you know, five or so races we've covered. I've never seen him to kind of just bring a potato to the track. I've always, he's always been... Uh, one of the top guys, so I'm really wondering if this is planned and he has a You know a lap 80 charge planned or if he really just you know brought the wrong setup here or just is not vibing with this circuit I Kind of think it might be a combination of a little bit of tire save and a little bit of just doesn't like the circuit because here's the thing Every driver has a circuit they don't like every single driver has a circuit somewhere that is just not their cup of tea and Maybe this is it for him you know, we have no way to know. But as we ride on board here, you know, he's doing a fairly good job following. I won't give him that. Um, this is Chris Horton who we're riding on board with. He's doing a good job following. But Riley Music, I mean, is doing a decent job of just kind of hanging out um, back there in P4. We'll see what he does. You know, like you said, maybe a lap 80 charge somewhere. But he is off the pace pretty considerably when you look at the cars around. Look at that. There is Kyle Tursak. He's trying to look up the inside there of the number four, Steven Rex. He's going for P5, and it does look like he might have it side by side here down the inside, and it looks like surprisingly that bottom line is starting to stick a bit better. Yeah, maybe it has cooled off as more people will run on the top of the track. Here comes Suck up down to the inside, and looks like the four will just relinquish all the spots there, but here comes Riley who he just got passed by the 0-1, but he's not going down without a fight. He's going high, low. He entered the corner high. He cut down through the center, got the run down low on exit, and he'll drag race him into turn number one. That is how you make a move, and I think Massengill is trying to use that exact move on Riley here. He will do just that, but he's a little bit further back on entry, so I don't think he'll have the run. He's going to get right into him. He's going to door him up the track us a little bit. And please don't turn him. Please don't turn him. Please don't turn him. Please don't wreck him. Oh, Blake lost it on his own. Look at that, though. Saves it, slots back in. He knows he was running a little too hard, and now he's going to settle in single file there. And they're going to just keep it moving and grooving. Blake bass back it off a little bit. His tires probably got cooked a bit, and uh, we're just going to watch him keep running. So, because the thing that we don't know as a commentator is there are times when that kind of stuff is going on and both of the drivers are laughing, they're having a blast on, on uh, radio comms and, it, and they're just genuinely having a good time. But then there's also the, the inverse of that where they are literally going at it. Like, I can't believe you're racing me like this. I'm gonna turn you. Like, if you do this again, like we don't know which end of the fence they're on <laughs> because that really affects um, the outcome that I was expecting or the outcome that ultimately we didn't see. Yeah, and that's the thing that you have to remember long term, too, is that, you know, we're watching it, we're calling it, but you never know what these guys are actually doing. Like, you never know how they're actually feeling. Um, so, 
it would be nice if we could listen to radios and hear how the drivers are yeah. you know interacting. I, don't have a I like button. to imagine I like to imagine they're all being nice to each other, but you know, I can't can't guarantee any such a thing. Yeah, so we saw the as uh, this battle for the lead is definitely getting spicy right now. And the 42 has gotten all the way to the back bumper of the three, but as we are now past the halfway point in the race, if this does go green, we're about 16, 17 minutes from the end of this race. So time will go by rel relatively quickly um, if no other issues do come a rise here. And Riley has uh, pulled a little bit of a gap there from Blake. And you know, Blake, once he made that first crossover there, Bradley, he didn't have the position that Riley had. He was only at about maybe his left rear quarter panel. And then he really sent it on in there. And that's why I got worried that it was gonna be a wreck or it was gonna be a retaliation. But I do wanna give both of them credit for whether it was intended, whether it was fun, whether it was a mistake or not. They worked through it like men and didn't, you know, do what was done earlier. Yeah, that is the nice thing to see is that, you know, they kept it together, kept it with each other and kept things moving. Blake Massengill is a driver that I know has a lot of skill. Riley Music, if I remember correctly, does race in real life as well. So Riley Music is a driver that I would expect to see a good chunk of, you know, professionalism out of as things go. And you can see there with Jacob Whip Motorsports, Sarah Contender Series, Pulse Sitter and Winner. Currently running P3 through and is starting to catch Chris Wharton and Nathan Rue because Chris Wharton and yep. Nathan Rue are right on the rear bumpers of each other trying to keep close. But Riley Music, you know, that last lap charge, that late lunge that we were talking about, he started it there because look at that 1827, 1827 yeah, there. A full yeah, time. Consistently. Yep, now he's down to two seconds, which is a long period of time, but it makes you wonder. How much is Horton being detrimented here by the three? I mean, if Riley keeps getting closer and closer as he is, if I'm the, the 42, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, turn the wick up here. And I need to get by because I want to get a lead. Um, so that way, you know, I have a, a little bit of a buffer for Riley. And I think he may be listening to there me because here is. he goes with a diver into turn number three. But that three is going to have the momentum off the top. They're going to drag race. And I think the 42 may fall back in the line. No, he has just enough space. The three is going to go super high. And I think he's going to try to pull off that crossover. Yeah, and here we go. Now we're down the back straight. Look at how close they're running here as we go down into turn three. And it is going to be Nathan Rue who's going to rue the day because he lets Chris Horton through. New leader, lap 74, Chris Horton. Yep, and we'll see if that is the race winning pass right there. Music down to about a second and a half. Um, he gained about three, four tenths of a second on that last time around. But now Chris Horton has the clean air. He has his own. Uh, breaking points that he can use. He doesn't have to worry about wh what's going on. As long as he's far enough behind that he doesn't have to worry about the dive bomb, um, he's going to be able to do what he wants to do. Last time by, I could tell you, he was roughly a tenth um, slower than Riley. So if you have to do the math, a tenth over, uh, what is this, almost 50 laps, 45 laps. Yeah, he's going to get passed. He's going to get caught. <laughs> Uh, but yep. his goal is that these times kind of stabilize here. We'll pull him up one more time. You can see a 330 to a 26. So if he can maintain that, then uh, Riley's going to have a task on his hands. Yeah, we'll see how that one unfolds. Um, Corey, I have a message from a uh, race control, and I was told to say this oh, directly. Je oh, jeepers. I don't have it. So this is news to me. Go ahead. Okay. You can say, and I quote, race control's policy is F-A-F-O. End quote. F A. I know what FIFO is because I've worked in food service for a long time. Yeah. But yeah. F A F O. I mean, I can. Uh, I'm gonna say bleep around uh, <laughs> and logo yes. bleep out. No bleep and find out. F around yes. and find. Okay. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. All right, it's not putting uh, it's not putting the, the old strawberries behind the new stra uh, in front of the old strawberries. That's not uh, get my no, 15 no, no. years of food service out of my brain here. But here is uh, Travis Suckup <laughs> underneath the again car that is probably not going to be scored here today of Kyle Tursak. So um, I don't know how much he really wants to put into this pass because it's really not going to mean anything in the, in the grand scheme of things, most likely. Uh, a little bit further back, Cameron Bennett in that 08, that green and white vehicle. He is trying to battle with Steven Rex. That is for 7th uh, and 8th. 
The mad scientist Mark Royer, he is one lap down and he is uh, testing out the BR ride in the bubble, in the, the bubbles, in the marbles up there. And then the last car on circuit is Jonathan Golden in the 10th spot. Uh, Williams, Heights, Crow, and Folds uh, out of today's race and hopefully permanently. Corey, not mincing words there at all. I'll tell no. you what, though, Chris Horton. If you intentionally wreck somebody, I, I, you're you're down on my totem pole. I got I got nothing for you. I got I no reason to sugarcoat anything. I'll pretend to be I diabetic mean, with my lack of sugarcoating. I mean, I I can't say a word because I don't disagree. Like oh, we're uh, we're wrecking, and that is the mad scientist and massing. Uh, oh, oh gosh. Um, I don't know how this happened, but I'm kind of scared to find out if I'm honest with you. What has happened here? Let's see this. All right, here we go. So they're, they're around there. There's the scientist up front. He's running the high line. He's giving room. Here's the O1. O1 is down low, side by side. And Wait, did, did, no. What the, the there is no way Mark Royer. Mark Royer. There's no way he did what I just think he did. Unless he's just, maybe that's his last ditch move because he's fed up with this. I don't know. But there's no way he did, he, he hooked a left there. I, did he hook a left? I don't think he knew that the 01 was where he was. I think he thought he was clear to take that inside line. Like, I, I want to give the benefit of the doubt here. Like, I think he thought that the 01 was going to turn down and then the 01 didn't. I think this is just miscommunication. Because look, right here, you would expect Blake to be turning in and he didn't. And then the 36 well, goes the, again, I, I Mark, I know him. He is the nicest guy. He's an, I just, I really have a hard time. Like, right here. That's where he turned left. Right here. But look how far away from the corner we are. So you would not, in any circumstance, turn in for turn one right there. Do you have a uh, onboard onboard where we can see the steering wheel? Okay, okay, we can ride with this. So let's see. Little left. Um, does that help his situation any, or make it worse? I, I I don't I don't know, but uh, let's see what's going on up front. Um, that puts us with eight cars running now. Yeah, I'm really flabbergasted because everything that I just saw makes me believe that was a left-hand hook, but my brain tells me there is no way that was a left-hand hook. That is just, you know, you're, just, you're fighting with your body to tell yourself that what you saw did not happen. Yeah, I don't know. Part of me... I... I Part of me wants to jump up and ask Blake what the heck just happened in his opinion, because he's up with his team in chat. I kind of want to jump up there and just ask him. Say, hey, I mean, Blake, you can ask. I, don't, don't drag him down because I don't have a sensor button. Oh, but no, if no. you want to privately go up and get an opinion, uh, he's gone. yeah, he's out. Uh, that, yeah. Tell you what, let me go ask race control. Yeah. Um, he, he thinks running for five seconds, Corey. I'll be right yeah, back. Yeah, go for it. Um, but that's going to be one to go right now, so we'll get ourselves going green with uh, about 31 laps to go. Uh, Riley Music will be the happiest one of the bunch because he'll have uh, that one and a half second deficit uh, eaten on up here. So that will help his causes out. And we will see what happens, but uh, that outside lane has been good. If three can get a good run here and maintain side-by-side -side position, then that may be an answer, and uh, we, that was a quick little uh, doodad back, so what we got? Yeah, so as we get back going here, Race Control just thinks that it's uh, it was a case of Mark Royer lap down racing way too hard, and what is this? We're three wide off the restart. I'll hold my thoughts for a second, because uh, there we go. Chris Horton's going through. Nathan Rue's going through. Riley Music saving tires. He's on the inside. Kyle Tursak, again, not being scored, we don't believe, but is currently running P4. Look at this. Nathan Rue, Riley Music side oh, by side. Here Kyle we Tursak. go. Wants to take it three wide. Don't take it three wide. Yeah. Maybe on lap run number 119, but lap number three. I mean, we're 30 laps to go in the race. Here he is to the inside. And I don't know if he knows that he's not probably going to be scored in this race. Because uh, if he had known that, he probably would have bailed already. I don't quite know. But the last thing I would want to have happen is him take out the 47. Uh, the 47, 
has, you know, he's cleaned his act up lately there, Bradley. We saw he's, he was overly aggressive for a lot of the season. He was kind of with people that were kind of problem ch children, but he's really cleaned his act up, and I don't think he wants to be involved in something. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's just kind of a, a rough situation to play. And he knows he has the speed to win this race. He just needs to get himself in the position he needs, but this is all helping Horton out as he gets into the left Ooh. rear. Maybe I just uh, give him a little bit too much credit. I don't think Riley was trying to spin. I think he just slid up the track there, honestly. Uh, but yeah, I don't think Kyle has a clue about the possibility of not being scored right now, um, which is why he's racing it so hard, because I kind of agree with you. I think if he knew he wasn't being scored, he'd just be gone um, as we watch this race continue. But yeah, uh, race control's opinion was that lap down car racing way too hard and uh came together yeah well like the, the confusing thing is he ran like third fourth lane so it's like he obviously had the intent of just letting people go um yep but I, yeah he i just really have a hard time explaining that left hand turn at that point on the straightaway but everything in my brain and soul says that was not intentional but kyle tersak going to the inside of uh Nathan Rue here for second. I mean, are we gonna... Now, the one thing that I don't wanna have happen is I don't wanna have an ambiguous winner. <laughs> so, uh -huh. I, I don't wanna be in that situation. If it is, I'm gonna make Andre come in the booth and deal with it. Uh, but he yeah, is in, yeah. Yeah, he is in second right now. Music still going to the inside. Rue, you could tell he was already falling back about halfway through the race. Well, now he seemingly fell off the proverbial cliff there. And uh, I guess we'll see if Tersak can gain a second in about 23 laps. Uh, Horton is running about 18 ones. We'll see now that the 54 slash 150 has clean real estate, what he's going to be able to muster. Um, but again, it probably is all for naught. Yeah, we'll see Steven Rex, too, in the background. I'm kind of keeping my eyes on him because he's been moving with some good pace. But, yeah, we'll see if uh, Kyle and Riley can work together here and move their way forward. Um, I... It's like you said, it's kind of one of those, like, uh, what are you really fighting for here, Kyle? Like, it's, uh, it, it kind of makes the whole win, P2, whatever place it finishes, it kind of makes it move. Yeah, because like, the, 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 the kind of the meat and the sauce here is that uh, there was a substitute driver being requested, but it wasn't told to anybody. Um, all of a sudden, Tursak just showed up to the grid with the livery on, and he was telling people that he's racing for another driver, but admin was not told at all. So I guess it was not approved. And obviously the number change was not uh, applied because they weren't told. So that's kind of what they're looking to do here in the series is make it run a little bit more professional, make it run, uh, you know, more organized. So uh, some people will have to pay the price for that to happen here. But Chris Horton is uh, going to be writing Christmas cards to both of these guys right now because as they race side by side this allows him to pull away by almost two seconds tight quarters racing 47 to the 54 and uh, I'll tell you I'm just getting really worried that there's going to be some contact that we're not going to recover from it's getting so dicey every single lap and there's some more contact yeah next and left to go here at this oh. point Riley is oh Kyle's around on no so now you have a guy who's Big not one. scored who's basically just wrecked three cars who are being scored Yep. But if he's not being scored, why is he still in the race? So maybe he is. I, I, if they weren't going to score him, then why would they let him race for this? Now, this looks like he literally blew a left rear, which is not obviously a thing. Um, we're going to kind of get, get an on board here from suck up. So, yeah, I am just I am royally confused in a couple facets right now. We'll get go back a few more Ouch. seconds. Well, the last info we were told was they're not being scored. So then why would they still let him race? Um, but yeah, he I, just lost it. And then, I mean, admittedly, nobody else had any opportunity. Uh, there goes Rex. Remember, he just made that recovery. Uh, Crow, no. our pole sitter, who has had a terrible run, suck up was just, I mean, he just had no time to react to that. So I, I will just say that I'm utterly confused at uh, what's going on here. I don't want to throw anybody under a bus yet, but I am royally confused and uh you know we are kind of on a time cutoff now so we uh well we'll get 17 minutes done in 20 minutes so i'm not really too worried about that but uh yeah yeah i don't know i don't know how to feel about this we'll see i guess we'll see how things go but uh the 150 54 situation i believe has sorted itself out Possibly, potentially. Oh, he's, still, he's still on track. 
And he's still... A... I mean, he's damaged, but I don't think he's chronically damaged. I don't see any, like... Oh, that camera's gone. That left rear. Yeah, but as, as long as it's still tracking straight, I mean, it's probably fine, so... We'll see. But this will, again, shake things up up front and allow Riley to close on in, but I just don't think Riley has the car to maintain. But again, maybe this is what he's been fighting for, that last 10-lap dash. I mean, could be very well the case. Yeah, we'll see. 15 to go here. Probably going to be 13 when we cross the line. Chris Horton just needs to buckle down and set 13 qualifying laps back to back and just send it. Riley Music is going to have to get brave to get a pass done, but really Riley's on the preferred line on that outside. But of course, Chris Horton will have the control of the field. Um, Steven Rex, Nathan Rue, both fast drivers, so I wouldn't be surprised to see either of them in the mix as well. 14 to go, one to green. We'll have 13 laps of green flag action here to finish things up. And uh, I think Chris Horton's going to get it. Yeah, I would put my money on him right now. Um, I know that three car is hungry for a win. Uh, the four, I mean, he was showing some speed. He was uh, going back for a, um, a comeback charge, but I don't know if he is damaged uh, too irreparably there in that zero weight of uh, Cameron Bennett. Uh, definitely that car has seen better days, but we're going into the restart zone, presumably for the final, well, hopefully for the final time. And green flag back in the air. Music stays side by side with Horton. That may prove problematic. The outside is where you want to be. The 42 kind of washes us up to the second lane there. But they're going to go drag racing down the back straight away. We'll see what happens through three and four. Yeah, 42 is going to try to oh, pinch him. Give him the room. Look at the three trying to send it. Ooh, Nathan Rue trying to send it through. Riley Music washes up. Look at that. He might actually try to switch back to the inside here. Here we go. Where does Nathan Rue find himself in this? You got Chris Horton to the outside. Riley Music to the inside. Corey, who wins? I don't know. Well, at this point, the 42 has cleared, so now he has the ability to play the defense that he desires, which I presume is going to be if you're going to get by me, you're going to do it down low, but the opportunity to leave the, the bottom open uh, with some hungry short track drivers is also a scary thought as well. So the best thing that he can do is pull away. And uh, whether he has the car to do that, I guess, is TBD. He didn't get off a four at all that time. That's going to help the 47 out. Uh, still maintaining about a barely a one car length gap. Yeah, we'll see how things line up. The three washes up into the wall in the background, and the four is going to be trying to get around him here. And Riley Music continuing to put pressure here on Chris Horton. As we see, they are just right. I mean, nose to nose, identical lap times. I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for in this mix because Riley's right there. Is he going to try to hold on for a couple laps and then just try to Try to do the bump and run. We'll see how that plays out. If he does, we'll see here. I'll cross the line eight to go. I saw what it looked like a three wide at the back of the pack there. So it uh, looks like that has settled out. But uh, into the fence was Rex and Rue, both off of two. Rex and Rue in the wall off of two. That rhymed inadvertently there. But uh, they will carry on just fine. I, I think music is waiting. Um, I think he is. He's just he's running too close. That's a little bit of contact. That's short track racing. He just washes him up the track. I don't think you could be mad about that with six laps to go. Now we just have to hope it doesn't escalate. And if I know Horton, I don't think it will. But he is going to give everything he has in that number 42. But the 47 may have just been saving this entire race. He's going to go for the lead. He's going to clear for it. But can the 42 come back at all? Yeah, I think Chris Horton can here as he's on what we thought was the preferred line for a while, but there it is. Riley Music gets ahead. He's going to slot up. Chris Horton is going to try to run. We're five laps to go across the line. There we go. Up the inside, he's looking for it. Riley Music defends it, and now we keep things moving here. Chris Horton trying to get the run on to three. We'll see what he can do. He's not got the pace there to get the run. Does Chris Horton not have enough tires to fight this? Uh, he's been pushing hard for a while. Maybe it's just too little too late to be able to get back. Riley Music in the lead here. Four laps to go. Yeah, four laps to go indeed. I think Horton has uh, remembered. Well, uh, he's, uh, he's succumbed to the inevitable here. So as we were talking about Riley just dropping back, it was clearly all a methodical plan to save the tires and use them when it matters. Now he's running about a tenth of a second faster. But I think if those cautions didn't come out, I think that 42 would have held on 
Uh, but Riley had the opportunity to gain that time back via the yellow flag, took advantage of it, made the move, and now two laps to go away from a victory. Yeah, if it wasn't for the yellow flags, I'm with you there, that uh, Chris Horton probably would have ran away with this and Riley Music would not be the winner. Uh, sometimes luck. Sometimes fortune favors the bold. Sometimes it's all about luck on short track racing. White flags out. Riley Music, one lap to go. It doesn't matter how many you lead. You just got to lead the ones that count. And in Riley Music's case, it is just half the track left. Yep, half the trap left. A quarter of a mile to go through three and four for the final time. And Riley Music... A little bump and run, short track racing, gets him a win here at Kern County, and Chris Horton will have to settle for second, third on the podium. Going to be Steven Rex in a chaotic race for uh, the field size we have. It was still chaotic, but I do give credit to the first two. They raced hard, but they raced as clean as you would expect on a short track. Yeah, drivers that we know are very, very clean and have it together, too. So expect nothing less from them. We'll see how things go. There it is. Riley burning it down. Good, good donuts. I respect a driver that can do some good donuts and not, you know, bash it into the wall there as we get things going underway. Um, eventful race. Oh, I'll say that eventful race. Uh, driver with the wrong number. Somebody well, intentionally wrecking someone. I mean, yeah. And I do want to bring up, because Andre did remind me of the reason they don't, pro, uh, they kept Tursak on the track is because they do give the uh, the driver the ability to prove that they were running the correct number. You know, sometimes trading paints messes up. Sometimes, you know, it just doesn't show up. Uh, but if they are running it locally and they can prove that after the race, um, they will get credit for the race. So that is why they did not ban him. So um, that is a, a good a uh, good decision there. But that being said, let's get our post-race show underway here. Uh, Riley Music with the win by 7 tenths over Horton. Steven Rex in third. Nathan Rue in fourth. Uh, Kyle Tursak with a fifth. We have Jonathan Golden in sixth. Cameron Bennett in seventh. Suck up Royer and Crow the top ten. And then I'll just finish this out. We got Massengill, Jeff Williams, Stephen Heights. And I will not mention the last name because that did not make me happy there. But uh, we'll go ahead if we can find him. And uh, we'll have a abbreviated interviews here but we'll get a couple questions in here for our winners and i'll go ahead and uh, give that to you there bradley yeah riley good evening tell me how you like kern county because uh, it seems like you liked it pretty well right there at the end so this is definitely one of my favorite racetracks i came here with star my first ever star race i ever ran and was able to qualify really, really good here. And I started from the pole, from the invert, and it just it became one of my favorite racetracks. And then it came up on the weekly series. Me and Chris raced it together like crazy. And he, I would, my philosophy then was go hard and try and make it. And his philosophy was to ride. And tonight it looked like our philosophies were completely different. And I rode heavy and he went harder than I, I really wanted to. So I let him go. And then Massengill went really hard. and. I let them go, and then it got about lap 50. I was like, if, if it goes green, I'll, I won't have a shot at catching them back. So I went as hard as I could there for a little bit, and we got the first yellow, and I felt like I was in good good sitting position right there. And then we just didn't get a good enough start. And then on that second restart with on the outside of Chris, it just – everything clicked together and i was able to tuck in line behind him and i didn't want to run into him he's a good friend of mine and it was his race if that caution didn't come out and i wanted to race him clean like i tried everybody else some people are hating and i can't say i want to say who all i can say is he was dq'd in the middle of the race so if that tells you anything he's calling me dirty when i'm not dq'd so well if it's the guy who got dq'd in the middle of the race believe me we uh we gave our mouth full there, uh, so no worries about that. But uh, just because we are a little tight on time, Riley, any final sh uh, shout-outs before we let you go after today's win? Uh, just want to shout-out Ryko.gz for the amazing set. Uh, after Chalk Setup Solutions, my boy Caleb Paul over there for building bad to the bone sets for Ryko, and myself for, building, for working on this set and getting it bad fast. Gotta love a man who thanks himself. <laughs> I would do the same, Riley. Congrats on the win. We'll talk to you. Thank you. All right. Now we got Chris. So, Chris, it, it seemed to be yours for a good portion of that race, and then the caution started to fly, and uh, ultimately didn't work in your favor there. You ran out of uh, steam there with about 10 laps to go. Uh, was that just a matter of 
getting pushed a little bit too hard and uh, burning off the tires there. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to push even harder than what we did. I mean, it just sucks whenever you save in these cars, it just burns off the right front. I, mean, I wish I would have had more time building the setup. I mean, I only put like maybe 30 minutes, an hour into it. Right before the league went off. So, I mean, I think if I would have had a little bit more time and I would have had a lot better of a setup. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was, I've been trying some stuff recently and I, I just think I put too much of what I was trying in there. And that's why we got tight at the end. Yeah, you got tight at the end drop back. But do you think, I mean, I think the caution came out, I don't know, 20 laps to go. You were up by a second and a half. Kind of given what you know now in hindsight, you think you may have been able to hold them off? Uh, if that last caution wouldn't have came out, I would have been able to hold them off. But I mean, that, that, every time a caution came out, we just got tighter and tighter and tighter. And, yeah, the heat cycle. I think it was like the, think it was like the first one where I, I was managed to get the car back a little loose, but once that second one came out, it was just a dump truck after that. Yeah, well, we'll see what you can do, man. Uh, I think next race we are at uh, Slinger, I believe, so that ought to be an interesting one. We'll see if you can uh, uh, get one spot higher next week. Grass on a solid run. Thank you. And now Bradley caught up with uh, the number four car. He went for a ride here today, got himself back on the podium, Steven Rex. Yeah, Steven, good evening. Kind of talk to me a little bit there because you started on ninth, you finished third, but it wasn't a simple trek up the field for you, was it? No, it was pretty rough. Uh, I just happened to be in the right place, you know, at the right time, you know, a couple times and, uh, just some guys got together and they'd slip up and I would get by. I was I was just conserving. I was running a medium pace and gonna wait till the end. And um, I did that and I actually, you know, it, it deceived me a little bit. I thought I was a little quicker than I was, you know, I thought I was gonna be quicker at the end and I wasn't. Uh, on cold tires, I was good for about three laps. And then, you know, Chris and uh, Riley just checked out at the end there. Yeah, they ran away, but in the end, you know, you were moving up. Do you think, just depending on how that end went, if you had a few more laps, you think you could have went for the win? I'm not sure. I hit the wall on that final uh, restart. I don't know, a couple laps to it. I was trying to run hard and get right up on them and make them race a little bit. And then uh, it got the car got tight, and I pushed up to the wall, hit the wall, and then it just didn't feel the same from there. I don't know if it was just in my head, but uh, it didn't seem to turn as good. Yeah, it was... Uh... It was rough too once you hit the wall there, but uh, any final thoughts before we send you off for the evening? That was a good, it was a good race for me. I'm just glad to get back up here in the top three. I think last year I ran five races, finished in the top five and uh, every race this year, I haven't made them all, but man, I have not been good. I just got caught up every race. So uh, good uh, moral victory for me. Yeah, congrats on the P3, man. Look forward to seeing you on the track next time. All right, thanks a lot guys, appreciate it. All right, well, that is a race here from Kern. I got to hop on a plane to uh, Hockingheim, and I forget where you're going, but you are going somewhere as well. But uh, final thoughts on what we've seen tonight, Mr. Bradley. I'm going to round this out with one final statement from uh, Mr. Massengill. It's a misjudge. Stuff happens. Well, most likely in my championship hopes, but stuff can't be perfect all the time. His official statement to me regarding the uh, incident that happened there yeah. with uh I mean, that's the, the it's, it's the equivalent of Terry Labonte left hand hooking you. You just it's you, you can't think that it was intentional. It's just, I refuse to until proven otherwise. But as said, uh, make sure you like subscribe, all that fun stuff uh, as we do trek on our mission to 1300 subscribers. Want to thank everyone for tuning in here today. Thanks to uh, RKM Setup Shops for joining the league here and uh, stay tuned for future action. That's going to be Corey and Bradley signing out of the booth. Have a great night and we'll catch you next time. Bye.